Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer from Practical Arduino. While I was working on the book, there were a whole lot of bits of hardware that I got to play with that unfortunately we couldn't cover. In fact, I ended up playing with, I think, just about every piece of hardware that's ever been built for an Arduino. And so what I'm going to do over the next little while is make a series of videos about bits of hardware that we didn't get to show in the book. You know, things that I liked, things I didn't like, talk about what's good and what's bad. And so the first thing I'm going to cover is the NKC Electronics Ethernet Shield. And I really, really like these boards. I should say that right up front. They're very cool. Um, one of the things that's nice about them is that they're designed to use the WISNET W5100 chip rather than the ENC 28J60, which is used in a lot of, um, of unofficial Ethernet shields. And what's good about that is that it's supported by the official Ethernet drivers. So what you can do is install the regular Arduino Ethernet library and um, use one of these and it will just work. All of the example code that's designed to run with the official shield works perfectly with these, which is fantastic. So um, they're really good from a compatibility point of view. Oh, and I should say, having worked on the drivers for the um, ENC 28J60 based systems, they kind of suck. I really can't stand working with them. Uh, so having a, a WISNET based system is really good. The other thing about these is that they're really cheap. They're only about $32. If you compare that to the official Ethernet shield at about $45, that's, um, that's quite a bargain. Now, they're not quite as cheap as the Seed Studio Ethernet shields, which are under $30. Bucks. But at $32 for a system that is compatible with the official Ethernet library, plug it in and it just works, that is really good. Um, so, good value. One thing I really like about them is that they come with stackable headers because it's pretty much never um, a good thing to simply put Ethernet on an Arduino and just run it like that. I mean, you always want to add something else. You want I.O. of some kind. So typically what you would do is take an Ethernet shield and stack um, a prototyping shield or something like that on top of it or some other system. And because these have stacking headers, you can do that, which is really nice. But there is a downside. Because of the way this is designed, the shield itself is not really self-contained. It has a module that plugs in on top of it, which is the WISNET module. That means that it ends up being very high compared to a normal shield. You have the Arduino itself and then the NKC um, Ethernet shield and then you have the WISNET module sitting on top of it and then of course there is the connector with all the magnetics and stuff. So you end up with a very high assembly by the time you put it all together. Now the result of that is that the WISNET module is higher than the stacking headers, which means that if you assemble this the way the manufacturer intends, you can't actually use the stacking headers. You can't put anything on top of it. So that, what's the point of that? But the thing is that you can actually assemble it slightly differently and um, lower the profile of the whole system enough that you can put another shield on top. And what you can see here is that I have assembled one of these the official way using the connectors for the uh, module that sits on top. This other one I have assembled by soldering the WISNET module directly onto the circuit board and then cutting off the header pins underneath. So the end result, if you put them side by side, is you can see that one of them is significantly higher than the other. One with the module mounted directly on the PCB, one with it plugged in. Now of course, if you solder it directly to the PCB, you can't take the module off and use it for something else, but I mean, most of the time you wouldn't want to do that anyway, so no loss. Personally, um, I'll, any, I'll be assembling in future, I'll probably be just soldering straight on. I had to move one of the capacitors to make it fit in order to do that, but that's pretty trivial. Basically, you just leave those parts off until you've got the main module soldered on, then everything else fits. You just have to sit the capacitor slightly high. So, um, so the form factor is pretty decent. Um, it's not quite as elegant as an all-integrated unit, but it's still pretty good. Now, one thing that they did that I really, really like, I admire this a lot, um, one of the things that I've come across playing with all of this Arduino hardware is that it drives me nuts when manufacturers don't mark on the actual overlay itself which pins they've used. And if you're designing an Arduino shield and you're using some of the I.O. pins, then please, please, please put a marking on the board to show which pins you've used. Now luckily, NKC have done that, which is fantastic. There is a little asterisk next to each of the pins that are being used on the shield itself. Now, if the manufacturer doesn't do that, it really sucks because 
if you want to add anything else to a system that has one of these shields on it, you have to go back to the manufacturer's website, you have to find the data sheet or the schematic for the actual shield itself, then you've got to go through it and you've got to try to find the pins that are used on the Arduino connection and then avoid using them. And it's just a total pain in the butt. So um, the fact that they've marked these is really, really cool. I like that. You should be able to just pick up a shield, look at it, and say, I can't use those pins because they're used on that shield. I'll use these other ones instead. And that's exactly what they've done on this, which is brilliant. Very cool. The other thing that's good about it is that it has mega support out of the box. Now, because of slight changes in the pin allocations on the mega compared to things like the Demela Nerva, you can't plug a standard Ethernet shield into a mega and simply have it work. Good thing about this is that they've put a little jumper on the board. All you have to do is change the position of the jumper, make a minor change in the library, and what that does is move one of the SPI pins, and it means that it will work with the mega. So if you're working with a mega and you want to add Ethernet to it, this is a really good board to go for. Overall, I really like these boards. They're good value, they're stable, the drivers make sense, they're, um, they're well written, um, and they, they have the markings on them that I like. The actual build quality seems to be good in terms of the fabrication of the circuit board and everything. So overall, I really like these boards. They're good.